What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to yet another fine prime time episode of Hanging Heavy. As always, I'm your boy Desecrator, and today we have, uh, I guess, uh, recurring guests. Uh, as always, uh, co host of the show, none other than the slick and sly. He's my type of guy. Ooh. <laughs> Bobby Ray. <laughs> and we have with us yet again via satellite. Garbage fire. Returning for the fifth week in a row. Some shit like that. Damn. Who count? Yeah, I need to stop. <laughs> it's, a, it's a character <laughs> flow. <laughs> What's going on, boys? How you guys doing? Enjoying a drink. Finally uh, getting nice weather over here. Yeah, it finally fucking cooled down here in Texas. Rain. <laughs> uh, and with that, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue the tradition of shooting rich and rare let's go boys three two one Oof. Uh, oh, this time it wasn't so bad because it didn't hit room temperature <laughs> Oof, it still tastes like gasoline yes. you discovered ice or what <laughs> no I put in I have my bottles in the refrigerator but, uh, I mean, sometimes we take so long to set up that fucking shit's already all hot. Shit's already... It's always hot. Shit's always close to boiling. <sighs> and, uh, yeah. Um, fucking... So, we started kind of late today. It's already technically Sunday morning. But that's because, uh... Daddy had to watch him some boxing. Whoops, wrong. Wait, no, that was a right. No, that's yeah. Daddy had to watch him some boxing. And uh the fight that I'm talking about was a a top rank uh, boxing match between uh Teofimo Lopez Jr. <laughs> Versus uh, Vasily Lomachenko. And the reason why this fight was uh, a must watch for me is I'm a big fan of Lomachenko. As uh, Papi gets super jealous when I talk about him. Because <laughs> he, he can hear the passion in my voice when I say Vasily Lomachenko. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, this fight. Uh, was also important because it's going to go down in history as uh, one of the first uh, unified, undisputed, lightweight, heavy, lightweight champion. So, for those of you that don't know or don't care, Vasily Lomachenko uh, had three of the four titles and he was fighting for his fourth one. And... Uh, Estafeo Lopez or Teofimo, excuse me, uh, Lopez. Mm -hmm. uh, he had one, so uh, Vasily was going for the one, and this other guy was uh, going for the three. It was a all or nothing battle, and uh, that's a, a big deal in boxing because no one has ever done it before at the lightweight division. So your boy had to watch it not only because I'm a fan of Lomachenko <laughs> but because history was made. Uh Vasily Lomachenko would have been the fastest ever to unify a weight class. But uh that didn't happen because uh fucking motherfucker lost. Shit. Hold on. Fucking so many motherfucker lost. You blew it! And uh this this kid Lopez uh is the youngest unified 
champion ever. He's 23. So either way, whoever won, it was going to be history made. So, I mean, it's a, one of those uh, rare once-in-a-lifetime kind of fights. I don't think anyone will ever unify it, any weight class at 23 ever again. Or at least in my lifetime. Now, uh, I think it's a fucking sham that this... I mean, literally, this is his first big fight. And, I mean, he showed up, I guess. He he took all the titles away from Lomachenko. It's not fair. It's not fair. Whoopsie. But whatever. That's uh, the risk you take in combat sports. Uh, I was trying to stream it with uh, the boys in the call, but uh, my internet sucks, so fuck you, Spectrum. <laughs> so I kind of had to just bail on everyone and watch it by myself and for those of you that don't know boxing is our championship titles are 12 rounds of 3 minutes and uh fucking Lomachenko usually starts off slow but today he started off a little too slow he didn't show up until the 7th round so if uh, you're not an idiot uh, you know that math uh, that's past halfway so uh, there was kind of no way he could win fucking retard dip, 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 dip. <sighs> well whatever it was a good fight after the seventh <laughs> so uh, quick question with that what's, well, uh, is this kind of like you know, Mario all stars where like you fight one, you take all those stars instead of just giving one. Well, uh, it was a unification fight. So, uh, like I said, the the one guy had uh, three titles of the four. To be the undisputed champion, you need all four of the belts in that weight class. Uh, the 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 up and coming kid had one, and uh, the veteran had three. So he was fighting for the one, and the kid. Since it was an uh, undisputed match, uh, he was fighting for three. So I mean, he he had more to fuck. I don't know. Who 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 would you consider having more to lose or to win? Because I mean, the kid has more to win, but uh, well, I guess he has less to lose. Yeah, well, whatever. The veteran fucked up. He he took too long to find his range and get comfortable in the fight, and that that cost him. Uh, that's that's just weird. It's just like, the way. It's just yeah, the way. no, I mean, I, I guess it's the rules, but that's just weird. Like I, I I'm, I'm betting my one, and you're betting your three. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the risk. That's the whole point. I mean, th that's the reason why it, it goes down in history. It, it's it at the lightweight division. It's never been done. So I, I think, when you, you when you have three and there's only one holding you back. Like you're gonna go for it. I mean, at, no matter at what cost. So I mean, and that that shows like that he's not a bitch, right? Like he's willing to lose them all to to win the one, to gain them all. I guess. Uh, I guess it's like the Infinity Gauntlet. What did it cost? Everything. He be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Damn for a bet, kid. He messed up though for being the veteran. Yeah, like I said, he starts off slow and like he he gets his pace, but he started off too fucking slow. And he didn't he didn't like feel comfortable or get his his ring legs in. You blew it uh, until the seventh round was probably his best round. And uh it's kinda too late when you're trying to win a best of twelve. <laughs> So whatever, fucking happens. Like I, I had never heard of this Lopez kid, but this kid apparently has fucking power, and he's a lightweight, so he's quick. So like it's real hard to to fucking uh, I guess because lightweights are not usually known for knocking people out, right? But this this fucking kid has been fucking smoking motherfuckers, and uh, he fucking won today. So whatever, fucking, it is what it is. Hopefully they give him a rematch, cause I I I think it was a 
closer than what they called it, but what the fuck do I know? I'm an idiot. Dip, 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 dip. Fuck. Self burn. Wow. Uh, like sometimes I get turned off of boxing because of those reasons. Yeah, there, there's too many rules, and like if you don't know. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Sounded like a fart. Uh, if 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 you don't know fucking everything or whatever, every fucking division has its own shit and whatever. It was it was cool. It was some somebody that I had followed from the beginning of their career, and I was hoping that he would pull it out, but he didn't. So whatever, fucking you win some, you lose some, but you you live. You live to fight another. So was day. it was it that close, or was it just like straight up like you? One. Well, I mean, they called it a unanimous decision, so I mean, that's two judges against one. Um, uh, fucking, uh, like I said, after the seventh round, it was a fight. Up until that, like, he, you, you, you gain points by like doing the dumbest shit. Uh, it, that's the thing that I don't like about boxing. Like, you can fucking just like give somebody a little touch. And that counts as a jab or whatever. So, I mean, he had more connected punches, so he wins the round. It's, it's not like it was spectacular or anything, but that's just the game of boxing. It's, uh, there's a lot more thinking involved in it than people realize. It's not just go in and beat the shit out of each other. That's, that's what UFC is for. <sighs> but, the what? Mike Tyson would do that. <laughs> Mike Tyson is a different kind of animal. There will, Ooh. there will never. Hey. The, what? Are you, are you gonna see the match? I want is to. Mike happen, Tyson but... against Roy Jones Jr. Yeah. That's a great it's fucking crazy. fight. <laughs> a fight with no championship involved, just them going well, at it. it. Well, that's crazy. Uh, well, I mean, they're gonna make a lot of money. Let's be real. Yeah, but this this is what trips me out. I, I've seen videos of Mike Tyson hitting the 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 bags and like the pads, and like Mike looks fucking sc as scary as ever. Like if you ever watch Mike Tyson in the gym when he was in his prime, like you could understand why he fucking dismantled people. I I grew up when Tyson was the fucking biggest boxer in the world. He was fucking smoking yeah. fools and smoking crack and buying tigers and shit. <laughs> and fucking, you know what? Like, uh, I I wish I understood what I was watching at the time because that's another one of those once in a lifetime motherfuckers, dude. And uh, well, yeah. I mean, uh, he 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 said the reason why he quit boxing was because he he didn't have that hunger to want to destroy somebody. He he was interviewed by Joe Rogan a couple times, and he said that every time he got into the mat, or like into the ring, is he fucking wanted to kill the person that was there. That that's all that was on his mind. And uh, fucking towards the the end of his career, when he started losing and fucking fucking up his life, because Don King is a shit promoter and a shit coach. <laughs> Uh, fucking, uh, he, he lost that will, I guess, and now that he's older and he's, he, he's, he got it, he got that hunger back, he said, and he started going into the gym and he looks fucking scary, he's, what, almost 50, and he, he'll still beat my ass, I would never, uh, fucking try to piss off Mike Tyson. Why are they giving you that? A lot of money. To well, say if it, they get if if they gave me ten ten million dollars, I mean, fuck it, a million dollars, to go fifteen seconds with Mike Tyson, I will let him beat the shit out of me that, for fucking that, uh, a whole round. You got that one whole round. Oh no, there's no way I'm gonna last the whole round. He's gonna. Well, oh, if he try or last the whole. I would just he'll he'll catch me. I ain't <laughs> running away from him. Have you seen me? <laughs> God damn it, Bobby. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it. Well, fuck. If they paid me just money to last as long as I could, 
then I would most definitely. Yeah, he's going to fuck me up, but guess what? I'm going to have a memory for the rest of my life. Or maybe I won't, because I'll probably be... You probably won't have I'll, pre- <laughs> I'll be so concussed I won't remember it. But there'll be video. You guarantee your ass there's going to be some video. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, fuck, <laughs> fucking the the thing with uh Roy Jones is uh Roy Jones has still been fighting. Like I think he had his last fight was sometime last year. And Why, he really? he still got it. Yeah, he's he's still a fucking motherfucker too. Roy Jones was a a fucking machine in his heyday too. But yeah, I mean he's he's not a as popular as he was because I'm, he's old. That's the one thing that he has over Tyson. Tyson uh, hasn't fought in like what fucking almost thirty years. So Roy Jones is trained. Tyson is training. But Tyson, dude, Tyson just needs that that one shot. Whew. That's crazy. Well, I mean, fucking, dude, people just. I also think uh, Tyson was a power puncher, but dude, Tyson was super smart in boxing. He, he he's what you call an angle fighter, and those are those are hard to those are hard to defend against. Cause like he he was so quick with switching angles and elevations and shit. And this is how you can tell I watch boxing. I'm a fucking nerd. Oh, today ain't your it's day. Bitch, you ain't no nerd. But yeah, let's get that. Uh, let's get that out of the way. Uh, that was my little tidbit of fucking sports and or fighting, whatever. Fuck. But yeah, fucking. Uh, I, I I saw some article the other day that I I just had to bring over because. Of the time of the the year that we're at, and let me go ahead and read you the the headline. And the headline reads: Fukushima, Japan to release contaminated water into the sea. Uh, do you guys know what Fukushima is? Does it ring a bell? Plant that actually had that a nuclear melt. Yeah, yeah. So Fukushima had was a nuclear power plant in Japan that. Uh, uh, destabilized after a tsunami and a earthquake, I think it was, yeah. and it had a nuclear meltdown. So they've had all this water since. Well, this happened in 2011. They've had this water and they've been treating it to lower the radiation levels in it since then. And uh, they're deciding that they would start in 2022 at the earliest to. Uh, slowly uh, uh, diluted into the ocean. Damn. Now, uh, people think global warming is killing sea animals. This is most definitely going to have an impact. <laughs> uh, a, a lot of the local fishermen and like, uh, what do you want to call them? The wildlife preserves or whatever fucking are like, hey, don't do it. No, this is fucking stupid. Don't do it. But they're like, oh, we have to do something with all of this fucking water. If we if we slowly trickle it out, maybe everything will get like a immunity or some shit. But this is how horror movies fucking start. This is how Godzilla yeah. fucking became a thing. That's how you started the teenage mutant ninja turtles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's shit, how you. Back to the that's Ooze. how you. That's how you start yeah. uh, Super Mario: Secret of the Ooze. <laughs> uh, so, fucking, with that in mind, let's talk about some horror movies, since it is that special time of year. Um, now, we had uh, this topic or idea of rating our top five favorite uh, slasher or horror movie villain whether it's a creature or a traditional slasher. So uh, let's uh, go around that, discussing it, and we'll, we'll, we'll see what what matches up and what doesn't. 
Fuck, I wish I had my pen. I wanted to write down what you guys had to say. Uh, let's... Uh, excuse me, super unprofessional. Let's <laughs> let's go ahead and let, let's start with you, garbage. You. Hi, puppy. I get to go first. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I guess start at number five, and work your way up to your. I mean, I don't know how you want to rate them. If you want to rate them like what you think is the most powerful, or just your favorite. I'm rating it just my favorite. Uh, I think I think with the. Uh... I think I'm gonna start with my favorite probably. I think for me, Fred. So Freddy's what, what, just. Your number five is Freddy. No, number one. Oh, your number, like number one. Your number one is yeah. Freddy. Okay. My number one is Freddy. Okay. Your number two. I think he's. He's, he's OP. Okay. Uh, what about your number two? Uh, number two, uh, I know I'm, I'm not sure if you guys consider him horror, but I do like Hannibal. Hannibal, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw that one in there, Hannibal. Okay. Uh, I think number three for me will probably be Aliens. Obviously, uh, different type of horror, but. Oh, I mean, there. Aliens from like the Alien franchise? Yeah. Okay. The alien. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think after that, it's it's a little bit split between a quite a few, but I I, I, I wanna just to keep it generic. Um, I think anything with supernatural things like the devil, a, de- a demon, it doesn't matter what demon it is. Uh, I think that's always for me fun to watch. Demonic. Just we'll a different just, we'll take on put, it. We'll just put demonic, whether that's Satan or demons or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, anything random. Uh, and then after that, and then this is more of my take. Uh, pretty much the the kid from Brightburn. Brightburn. He's probably <laughs> one of my favorite ones right now. At least right now. And who is your? You're most likely to have a drink with, have a beer, have a. Oh, Freddy, out. dude. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just t- touch it. I think if, if you get uh, if you get enough. Oh, fuck it. Terrorize a couple of people. We don't have to kill them. They just find out the deepest secrets. Damn. I mean, if, if you can do an inception to steal stuff, why not just do, like, Freddy to just bully some people or find out some stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like... Yeah, you can find out that that uh, there's a creator all of a sudden, you know, like doesn't hate, doesn't most fear just like dolls or something, or I don't know. Hey, dolls are freaky. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, uh, and you, puppy, what are you? I don't know how you want to go. You want to go five to one or one to five? But I go to uh, after five. At five? <laughs> yeah, I'll start at five. Okay, who's your number five? <laughs> Hannibal. Your five is Hannibal again. Hannibal. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, hold on. You're breaking up. Hello. Hey, hold Our on. Fourth will be Alien. Alien uh, also. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number two. Three. Uh, Michael Myers or three? Yeah, you're number three. Oh. Really? Who was who was your four? Hand. Who was your four? It was Hannibal fifth, Alien four. Okay, I didn't hear your three then. Three was Michael Myers. Mike, okay. Your two. Your number two? Uh, sorry, I feel forget about it. Uh, fuck, we're working. Get up with Leatherface. Number two, Leatherface? Yes. Dude, I totally forgot about him. Fuck. What? Yeah, no shit. What's your number one? Pinhead. Oh, nice. Holy shit. And you're, uh, you're to get a drink with? Pinhead. Just because <laughs> we don't know much about him. You know? Like, what's his whole story of everything? What, what's his deal? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so here, okay. let's round it out with mine. I'll go from five to one. Now, number five and number four for me can, I mean, change. The, they're interchangeable. Uh, it was basically a tie, so I, I just put it. My number five is Freddy, obviously. He has to be top top five. My my number four is the Jigsaw Killer. My number three, Michael Myers. My number two, and uh, I have a big affinity for this one. It's Jason. <laughs> but my number one, and damn, Poppy, we were meant to be together. It's the oh. cen- it's the Cenobites. And not not just that Pinhead, the, the, the Cenobites, whole, like the, the whole, whole crew, yeah, the whole crew. The whole now, uh, cameraman, CD man. The, the guy, the chatterang, <laughs> the stupid fat guy with no face and just. <laughs> but yeah, fucking. And the the one that I would drink with is Freddy, obviously for the same reason that you said, uh, garbage. <laughs> <laughs> like it, w- it would be cool to get fucked up with him, and then like he's like, "Hey, you guys want to see something cool?" <laughs> and then like he'll take us on, he'll take us on some crazy ass trip. Cop. He seems like the most cop Palo one, dude. Mm-hmm. He's gonna do some crazy shit. Dude. He's gonna do some wild shit. Yeah. You know what? Real. You know one thing I would like to do with Freddy if we were drinking and do that shit. I'm like, dude, let me do the thing with the tongue and the phone. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I would do? I would cut all of his fingers off because he could just grow them back. That's horrible. What the fuck? I mean, technically, you could do that with basically all the other ones on my list except for the jigsaw because he's dying of cancer because he's a bitch. <laughs> but yeah, Bobby, look at that. Okay, so w- with your list, who who is your... Like who's your number one like most badass killer or Pinhead. enemy whatever? I'll take Pinhead. Pinhead? Who would be Pinhead. Yes. Okay, and you guys? Like, would... yeah. Are you garbage? On my list. I mean, it doesn't have to be on the list. Like, if you were to pick somebody to fucking have a death battle, who would you pick from any horror movie? Freddy, dude. Freddy. Ready? That's fair. But yeah, Poppy, uh, you, you told me you, you thought I would pick Jason because uh, I love Jason. Yeah, I know you. Jason's my favorite. I mean, straight up, but I know the motherfuckers are the Cenobites. Pinhead. Like, there, there's, there's no yeah. way anyone could put a hand on them. They're extra dimensional beings. <laughs> like, yep. they... Fuck a dream. These motherfuckers can go to different dimensions. Freddy's a bitch compared to Pinhead. Motherfucking Pinhead. You have to go to sleep. Or yeah. Go to sleep to Freddy could take effect. Yeah, I don't think fucking the Cenobites sleep ever. I think they're too oh, busy. Tor- I think they're too busy tormenting souls for all eternity. Well, wouldn't that be a soulmate, though? The what? Wouldn't that be a stalemate then? How's that? I mean, this is the thing, right? You're you're supposed to be able to meet to fight, right? Yeah. So, how do you meet? How do you get them? You know, like, they start designing a movie, right? How do we get Freddy and <laughs> and Zenobites to meet each other? Do you know what would be a sick way? Fucking Freddy goes into somebody's dream, and they have that Inception mm-hmm. fucking security bullshit. And this, the security <laughs> bullshit is fucking Pandora's box, and oh, f- and dude, and Freddy fucks with it and opens up the gates to the other dimension, and the Cenobites come. Freddy would be fucked because <laughs> they they could be like, oh, like you think you're fucking hot shit in this dream? Well, let's go to the fucking flat dimension, motherfucker. Now you ain't shit. We can. Cross any dimension and slaughter in any way, but like that's cute. You're in dreams, motherfucker. We're in different dimensions. But you see, that's an endless battle. Because what? How many times did Freddy come back? Just because again, somebody else started doing that shit. 
Well, yeah, I, I, I think it, if anyone can defeat Freddy, it would be the Cenobites. Even if they don't well, defeat yeah, him, I, they, they could just it. torture him forever. Fuck. I mean, they don't have to they have to, they could just get the hooks. Yeah, they don't even have to touch <laughs> him. They could just fucking shoot hooks at him. Oh, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, Hellraiser uh, garbage. But, yeah, I've seen it. I actually was thinking about it, like, but I kind of am, like, with um, with Papa on this one, like, since there's very little known on them, that's why I kind of was, like, I like the mystery fact, I like the mystery thing, but it's just, like, okay, we don't know info, and I never saw past part two, I know, like, there's, like, a million yeah, of them. Yeah, there's, like, 18 Yeah, yeah. So, I don't suck. After, you know, yeah, after, really the, did. after the second yeah. one, they, they kind of just uh, phoned it in. That's what, that's what I'm saying. They added like three centimeters and what's like a camera man. Like a CD <laughs> once man. Like, once they went into the internet, I was like, yeah, fuck this. Yeah. I didn't try to remake it, but it looks. Oh, you know, the nice. the Hellraiser looks so horrible. <sighs> ah, fuck. You, you know, uh, I guess as a notable mention, I would have the thing. The, thing. Well, the really creature from the, the thing creature is, from the besides... thing, exactly. Exactly, the creature is the only like, thing that knows. Maybe alien and the thing could go at it. <laughs> maybe the thing is the alien face hugger. Ooh, they do look kind of similar. A, a giant face hugger, right? Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, for. Crazy a my my premise for fucking yeah. Freddy versus the Cenobites is pretty fucking sick though. Yeah, that was yeah. Good. I should be a writer. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> Let's just start making <laughs> shitty YouTube movies. <laughs> the what? The what a clay creation can. <laughs> ah, fuck. Well, uh, let me go ahead and let, let's take a break right here because uh, the fucking signal's getting kind of choppy. That way we can close it down real quick and bring it back up. Cause uh, I hate talking to somebody that's like, oh. <laughs> so yeah. Well, uh, with, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and take a quick technical difficulties break. Rich and rare. And we're back. Uh, well, Skype is still being a bitch, so whatever. Dip, 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 we'll dip. just uh, ride it as it is. Um, so yeah, getting back to it, uh, we were talking about how many shitty Hellraisers there are. <laughs> uh, apparently there's ten. I didn't even know that. I thought there was like eight or nine. God damn, ten. God damn it, Bobby. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, we we started talking about uh, also the fact that the same thing happened to Freddy Krueger. The first two movies were like genuinely scary, or at least attempting to be. But maybe after the third or fourth one, he like got comical, and that was still cool. Cause I mean, how many fucking killers are like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, he, I guess, killing people in just like straight up, uh, sheer terror ways gets kind of boring. So killing people in like the most crazy ways, I guess that's what made Freddy cool because there was no limitations. It's a dream, whatever. Like, doesn't he turn into a snake in one of them? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fucking stupid. I think the best one was the the bed scene. I forgot which one it was where he like <laughs> he fucking... to the bed. He fucking of blood. Yeah, he eats them through the bed pretty much. I think that's in the first or the second one. Ah uh, <laughs> uh, man, I wish they made movies like that these days. Like now everything's just fucking jump scare, jump scare, jump scare, fucking shitty dialogue, jump scare, jump scare. Uh, <laughs> t- tense moment, jump scare. And then fucking like happy ending. That sucks. I guess so. The only gory ones are like the Saw movies. Yeah, and even yeah. though even those got kind of fucking cheesy. I mean, there's yeah. like a, fifteen Saws also. Shit. 
<laughs> but fucking uh, you should look at Insidious. Insidious, yeah, Insidious is all right. I I, I fuck with it. Um, it's still a jump scare. Yeah, it, it's still like ah, fucking horror movies now. Don't try. Like, like they're, they're just talking. Next, the next scene, there's something there. Ah. Yeah, or like fucking somebody drops books or some shit, and it's a loud noise. Yeah, you, I, you, I should know. Watch, you should watch the two after that. Like, I actually thought they started adding like, a little more story to it. In which one? Uh, Insidious. Oh, I've only seen the first one. Isn't there like three or four of those? There's, well, I, I get the last one, which is like the key or something. Uh, so it's actually pretty well I liked it when I went to go watch it so like the one that people shit on a lot is Paranormal Activity I actually like that one the first one I think it was good I didn't think it get shit on until they started doing the whole yeah and it became a thing they yeah, sat 20 parts yeah that's why I'm saying they're like fucking that's the only kind of horror movie they make now they don't make movies that are like I, I guess mentally tormenting like the movies that fuck with your brain those those are my favorite like uh I, I've been watching or trying to watch as many horror movies as I can on Netflix and there's uh, I, I'm not too into Netflix like their content is pretty garbage to be honest <laughs> but there there's this movie that I saw uh I was actually surprised by the ending I was like oh no shit uh props props to this movie and the movie's called Eli I don't know if you've seen it or heard about it I don't think so uh, well, I'll, I'll give you a little thing about it like it's about a kid who has like some fucking autoimmune disease he's basically like a bubble boy like he, he can't go out because like, he's allergic to nature or whatever the fuck so his parents take him to some like crazy specialist or whatever the fuck and he starts seeing ghosts and shit. But uh, th- that's as much as I'm going to give away. It- it- it's kind of like your run-of-the-mill horror movie. But the I-, I appreciate the ending. And like some of the imagery that they did. Uh, so for, so if-, if you have some free time, th- that's one that I would recommend. Eli. You, sh- on- you should look into Shudder. Shudder? Uh, I've-, I've tried it. It's a bunch of bullshit. Like they have, they have classics, and don't get me wrong, I I'm down for that. But at the same time, like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not gonna pay for shit that I shouldn't have to pay for. You know. Let's give it, yeah, I, just for the month of October, right? Beyond. <laughs> yeah, that's beyond, true. Beyond that, theme. That, that should have been a good. That that's actually a good point. What I like to do is I like to go to like, fucking. Uh, like big lots and like shitty little stores that they have like dollar bin movies and I bought a movie like four or five years ago that I haven't seen yet and it's fucking werewolf cop <laughs> <laughs> it's on Netflix is, is it? it no I think so, no dude. way yeah I, oh, oh, it's not, yeah, it was on Netflix werewolf so cop so I, I saw it and I was like what the fuck they made a sequel or some shit what do you think? <laughs> Werewolf Cop. No way, yeah, that's what it's called. Werewolf Cop. <laughs> I saw the cover and I was like, no way, this is a fucking actual movie. I yeah, like just just from the cover alone, I was like, no, I'm I'm totally buying this. No matter how shitty it is, I'm gonna guess it's really shitty. I'm buying it for fucking three dollars American at Big Lots. <laughs> this movie came out in 2014. I bought it in like 2019 or some shit. <laughs> You're always gonna find random stuff. Like last time, uh, so we're at a friend's and he told me, hey, let's watch something random. So there was like, let's watch Killer Mermaid on Netflix. Oh, isn't that the one with a uh, fucking uh, uh, Daniel Radcliffe or some shit? I don't know who it is, but I'm never watching it again, dude. Like, no, dude. Like, it's, <laughs> like no. Dude. Killer like, Mermaid. I understand. Like, you cannot be. They cannot all be home runs, but oh yeah, there's yeah. some stuff that you just no. Okay, no, so but um, hold hold on, let me read the the front of the out uh, of the DVD case or whatever. It says mysterious, irresistible, deadly, killer mermaid, 
And then some asshole said, it's like, I know what you did last summer with Splash. <laughs> a sexy, atmospheric creature feature. Yeah. If I saw this, I'd be like, no, I don't want to watch this. No, thank you. Uh, but uh, fucking, do you, do you guys have Hulu or Amazon Fire or whatever the fuck their shit is called? Amazon Prime Amazon TV Fire. or whatever the fuck. <laughs> whatever their shit is called. Which one? I'm not I think Hulu. it's I think it's on Hulu, but it was on Netflix like five years ago, and it's a really good fucking. I I guess you can kind of call it a horror movie, but like it's not scary. It's just got like horror-esque imagery and uh, I guess characteristics uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it already or heard about it but it's called John Dies at the End uh, I've heard of it and uh, that one that, that one is fucking good I saw it on it's by that <laughs> let me see it's by that director eh? uh, oh that director yeah yeah I remember that one uh, apparently it's a, did... it's a book uh, series but it, the director is Don Cascarelli. Don Cascarelli. This guy has been known to make Phantasm, Baba Hotep. Yeah, that one, Baba Hotep. He did that one. No, what's, what's his name? Have you ever seen that one? Baba Hotep? No. No, you haven't seen it? Oh, man, it's not a horror movie. No, it's, I. It's, it's a, it what? That's a cool little film. It's a good little film, dude. Yeah, like how they take a. That's one with Kurt Russell movie. or some shit. No, it's Elvis. That's what's his name? The yeah, Evil Dead guy. Yeah, I know it's Elvis, but who's in it? Oh, it's Evil Dead. What's his name? Oh, Bruce. it's is it fucking uh, Bruce Campbell? Uh, no way. Yes. Yeah. What but, the fuck? Yeah, I didn't know that. I never saw it because I thought it was fucking Kurt Russell. No shit. <laughs> Bruce Campbell yeah no for real like, I do have to fucking watch this movie dude it's a good film dude you gotta watch it it's it's not like a horror film or anything but it's a good little film dude I like how they put a little twist on the theory of Elvis you were like I, I, I can believe that <laughs> yeah I don't wanna say it just watch it yeah 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 dude I'm looking at Shutter right now have have this is gonna be related. Have you ever seen that video of Nicolas Cage, uh, Nicolas Cage's agent, on YouTube? Nicolas no. Cage's agent. Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, and how he would. Yeah, that's what it's called. You should really watch it right now because I'm about to show you something. Nicolas Cage's agent. So, it's pretty much like it's it's a it's a short video, but pretty much it shows you how Nicholas Cage will take on any role. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um. Oh, there's an actual exclusive in Shutter with Nicholas Cage. What is it called? It's called Col Color Out of Space. Oh no! Isn't that the one where he's like super crazy? Uh huh. He, there, there's a movie that he did recently where he's like acting super fucking weird. Dude, the the, the description for the movie is super weird. It's like after a meteorite meteorite lands in their front yard, Nathan Gardner and his family find themselves battling an in extraterrestrial organism as it infects their minds and bodies, and he turns their lives into a living nightmare. The fuck. Oh, hold on. let me. Let, let, let's take a quick break so that I can watch this uh, Nicholas Cage's agent and we'll we'll be right back rich and rare and we're back um, we kind of got sidetracked on what we were talking about so uh, we're just gonna move on forget what was already done and let's just get over it god damn it Bobby so you guys were talking about the new Deftone album and I didn't know they had put one out until recently I kind of just stumbled across the news now I, I haven't heard anything from it and you guys are kind of discussing what you've heard so let's just hear what you guys have to say since I 
have kind of no input on it at all. <laughs> Discuss. Mm-hmm. Can I go first, garbage? Uh, yeah, go, puppy. Oh, you go. Oh, I oh. hear you. Uh, so I guess I want to say, like, for me, Deftones is a, it's a great band, group, whatever you want to call it. But the thing for me about Deftones, or the things that I've liked, is that they don't follow a formula for the music. And every song that I like about them is unique in its aspect. And, but every single song just feels different to me. I don't get that vibe with this album. Like, yes, I get it. Every song is different. But I think that uh, a lot of the songs are missing climax. Uh, like, for example, some of the songs that I love from them, obviously, it's like Passenger. Uh, I'm going to have my list right here real quick. Um, obviously, the Minerva, Digital Bath, uh, that was in my own summer. So, I don't know, man. I just don't get that feeling with this album. There's no song that sticks out to me. That, oh, I think there's two or three songs that stick out to me, but as an album, is it? It's good. It's not as good as the other ones, I say. Yeah, I, yeah, they're all over the place. It's harder now compared to the last album. Yes. I, I think the last album was fucking awesome. To me, that was probably the closest thing to a White Pony album you could ever get, I think. But uh, I guess it's all right. It's, it's still good. I get you on the harder sounding thing. I was listening to was it Orantia or Orantia? That's why they get this heavy, and then it went back into. And like I said, it's not that it sounds bad or anything. I just feel like this is an album, nothing but filler songs that you would get on the other albums. I mean, maybe I need to listen to it one more time or a couple of more times for a song to grow on me. But I just did. I didn't feel like one song stuck out to me, at least not yet. So maybe I need a few more drinks. <laughs> maybe I need more drinks. I was trying to see the list of the songs, man. I can't remember. I think it's track number, track number three. I think that's the one that sounds like really heavy compared to the stuff. I think the second was also heavy. But it's. I know I know a desecrator made a comment earlier, right? Like you hear that classic when you go see reviews and you hear that classic oh they went back to the roots and I'm just like, okay, like um uh, I made this comment too, I was like, Okay, what made them leave or what happened? I mean I get it, you're supposed to explore or a lot of bands explore new sounds. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's Deftones always like the thing I like about Deftones, you put a track on, you know, to what album it belongs to or some bands you can play a track you're like ah to the second it just blends with other albums right Deftones doesn't have that I think that's yeah. what I always like about Deftones like all these songs you, you're gonna know it came from their last album yeah yeah but yeah a, a lot of people give it a great review I think it's not as good like I'm not saying it sucks but it's alright I prefer the last album they did. Like, Everybody Loves White Pony. I think Gore, the last album, was close to a White Pony. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, none of these songs really stick out too much. They're good songs, but none of them are... A digital bath, uh, yeah. Ch- a change. Um, I can't think of it. <laughs> Other ones right now. Yeah, like a, it's it's that's that's just my thing, man. Like every single, like I, I guess I'm gonna try and repeat myself, but just it's not a passenger, it's not a change, it's not a my own summer, it's not, uh, which is the one that I like, Poltergeist. Um, yeah, it's a good one. Beauty School, like just things that I still remember. I even Hole in the Earth sounds. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, it's a good song. So, like, it just feels like 
this is all the leftover songs that we had and we <laughs> like it's yeah like it, it feels like that like can you know how when bands release that album that is like hey guys these are the songs that didn't make the cut yeah, well, it's, yeah. for a re- it's for a reason but <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's again what, I'll, I'll... that's what that's what my dad did with, with steal this with, album with, yeah no it was after steal this album with the other one hypnotize mesmerize yeah yeah I think that those side maybe really um, I, think be, I think with both maybe you're right yeah. I think let's do this album with that one yeah, fucking, uh, I know for sure that uh, Darren's, like, solo project, Scars on Broadway, <laughs> all of those songs were literally songs that yeah. System of a Down uh, rejected, I guess. And if if you haven't heard Scars on Broadway, it's fucking awesome. It's, like, not System in their prime, but... It's still really good system of a down tracks without Surge sinking on them or singing on them. Like Darren's not the greatest singer, but he do all right. Cause all right. Did you ever like Surge's uh, album? Uh, yeah. Eh, it's all right. I could, I could, I could, I could miss it and not miss it. <laughs> I could miss it. Um, but, uh, saying, like, the songs that didn't make the cut, that's basically what happened with Static X's new album. And Um, me and Poppy had talked about this a long time ago when they announced, uh, they were doing the 20th anniversary of Wisconsin Death Trip, and they were going on tour with a a masked singer, (laughs) and, uh, fucking, uh, the, the album dropped, and I, I hadn't, I haven't heard it. I completely I forgot about it. So, I think I'm going to listen to it, like, over the next week. And if we record next weekend, which will be Halloween. <laughs> oh, it, it's two weeks, no? Listen, yeah, you're a week ahead, bro. Yeah. Is it? No shit, really? It's a two weeks, yeah. Next week's the 24th. Uh, I'm a retard. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, let's just bring that back. I never... <laughs> I, I never said nothing. <laughs> I know what you guys are talking about, but yeah, Halloween's in two weeks. <laughs> so you have two weeks to listen to it. No, we'll we'll talk about it next week, I guess. I don't know how big of a Static X fan you were, garbage, but me and Poppy uh, really, really, really dig Static X. I'm, again, after all this shit that we've listened to here. I think a lot of these great groups are uh, 20 steps above them. <laughs> oh, like Bitch and Animal? Or your, f- mom, your mom segment. Oh, your music of the month? Hell yeah. Yeah, I hope. I, I still guess as long as it's not a Monte album, I'm okay, it's, man. Hell no, man. That is not Monte. It's fucking... <laughs> It's a it, it, every <laughs> once in a while, every once in a while, every group has a Monte album, has yeah, a Monte no, song. I don't think Static X ever had one. I'm a fan of Static. Uh, well, okay, I'm let me. I'll I'll be the judge of that. Uh, no, <laughs> no, you won't. Okay. <laughs> He's a man in peace. He died. Okay? He died. He <laughs> let him live his death in peace. Yes. <laughs> they did not have one bad album. I mean, uh, they're not the greatest albums you ever heard in your yeah, life, yeah. right? But. It's just good. I don't know. It's a thing, dude. It's, Hold on. You know. Let me let me let me look at a discography. Okay, so I heard uh, up to start a war. After that, I kind of just never listened to them again. So I heard I have Cannibal. 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 Yeah, that's the one right after Start a War. Yeah, I bought that album. It was good. I liked it. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you just kind of uh, move on from yeah. bands. It's not like that they oh, yeah. get bad or anything. You just kind of get into something else and kind of forget about that shit. Yeah, because they didn't bring much. Like, like I don't, like I said, they're not the greatest band ever. Yeah, they didn't yeah. Any greatest albums ever or anything. I mean, it was just good music. For me, it was just, yeah, they're a consistent band. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. There, there's a difference from uh, doing the same thing and doing what, like, uh, like, or having your own sound. There, there's a difference. Yeah. And, and Static X had their own sound. Yeah. There, I, there's, can, I can appreciate that. Yeah, there, there's no way that another band can, I guess, like, replicate it. Yeah, you can do covers and whatever, but like you, you can't, you can't touch. Like fucking Wayne Static just had such a unique voice, and his fucking riffs were fucking heavy. I think Cannibal was like the heaviest album, dude. I gotta check that one out then. Yeah. Cannibal. Well, yeah, fucking. I... Uh, their their lead singer died like in fucking what was it, two thousand. Fucking four. When the fuck did he die? Shit, hold on. Let me see. Oh, like 2015? 15? 14? 2014? Yeah, died 14, 2014. Three. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, they announced this uh, this new album. It literally... Or it's not. It's a new album with tracks that they had recorded that they never finalized or they never put on an album. So it's like the last recordings they have of this guy. So they wanted to, I guess, do a tribute to him and finish the songs that he recorded. So they got the original lineup to to fucking come back and re-record all the instruments and fucking high def. And uh, they got singers to fill in certain spots uh, where, uh, I mean, I guess they can't complete the song because he's, he's not here anymore. So I'm... They needed somebody to fill it in, right? And it, when they when they recorded, they had to do it, you know. Yeah. Do their hair like him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Large, no, I, I I get you, man. Like uh, again, I, I with Avenged when they lost when the the Rev, yeah. When the Rev passed away, they still they went through several drummers actually. Like I know they had a uh, Mike Portney at one point. Yeah, they had Mike Mike Portnoy. Yeah, Portnoy. Um, so they had a, and then obviously they had a couple of albums. The one thing with them though is that every single album, they try something new, and I can respect that. Uh, obviously, some things are better than others. Um, the last album, uh, which was the stage, had a, had the songs all over the place, which I kind of liked. Uh, and then they had like afterthoughts after that that they came afterwards. So they would have like a, uh, they would have one song afterwards. Uh, they were released like on streaming services and whatnot. Yeah. He even start. He sang Spanish, as well. And it's just like he did. Uh, I mean, if you're if you're familiar with like Latin stuff or Spanish stuff, he did a uh, Malagueña Salerosa. No, I'm not familiar with that. Dude, if you listen to it, if you listen to the song, you're gonna recognize yeah, the song you'll, you'll because yeah. you recognize it. And he holds um, the tenuto. He holds it pretty well. Uh, considering that he's singing in Spanish, and yeah. considering obviously the the I know the procedures he had on his throat and whatnot, so yeah, yeah, he fucked his throat up. Yeah, so he's it's it's something that you'll listen to once just to admire what he can do. Yeah. Um. So if if you have a second on uh, a second, like if you ever have a second or two, like just listen to the song. It's pretty good. Yeah, fucking. Uh, I I dig the way M Shadow sings. Uh, on in their first uh. Their first album, uh, Selling the Seven Trumpets. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a song on it. It's probably my favorite Avenged Sevenfold song. It's called Seize the Day. That's so, the third album. Selling. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. What the fuck is the name of that song, man? I Hold think, on. I think you think you're on Warmness of the Soul. Yeah, yeah. The that, that's it. One? That's the one. Yeah, the one with the piano. Yeah. Yeah, that song is fucking amazing. It is. Uh, considering that the whole album was like hardcore, what would that be like? Actual punk, their uh, metalcore, metalcore on that album, just on that album. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty good. I can, I can actually see it. Um, but yeah, he's he's got some interesting vocals. Yeah, yeah. And then well, later on, when he fucked his voice up, he had to learn how to sing. <laughs> yeah, he had the he had the vocalist coach, I think, yeah, from yeah. Pantera, I think. So it was interesting. Is that when he learned to go? Can you see? 
a mi Zeli. I think I'm not too sure, man. Screw you, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, fucking speaking of Pantera, man, I, I went on a, like, a little, like, look back at a, I guess just a shit that Phil and Selmo has done. That motherfucker is busy. Right now he's in, like, four different bands. But when he was uh, still in Pantera when they broke up, like, for the first time, uh, he started Down. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. I think I have. They're, like, a southern... Almost rock. stoner yeah. rock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like soil, kind of like soil. Uh, no, uh, not like, exactly. Like a dog. I, I mean, yeah, it it it's different. It's not Pantera, but it's fucking yeah. good shit. Cause, like, I, I don't know. People don't respect Phil and Selmo, but his he's got fucking pipes, dude. Motherfucker can sing. And uh, well, he also did Super Joint Ritual. Uh. And, like, uh, he was in, like, three or four different bands at that time. But uh, I fucking found out that he's doing a black a black metal band. Damn. That's crazy. Like, motherfucker does every genre. And that has to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this fucker has a huge resume of bands. Yeah. He's Arsum Anthem. Christ Inversion, Southern Isolation. Damn, it's a long list, man. Yeah. I like the, I like the genre sludge metal, groove metal, Southern rock stuff. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, I was fucking jamming to some super joint. Uh, and then some down. If uh, you want to like, hear... Like how smooth he can sing. Listen to uh, the ghost along the Mississippi. It's from Down. <laughs> it's a great song. Nice verse. Yeah, it it is sick. Uh, it's a sick song, but like he sings it like a motherfucker. Now he he doesn't sing like he used to back in the day, mm-hmm. but back in the day he if he would have taken care of himself, like he could have been the motherfucker, you know. But like now his voice is like fucking super deep and raspy as fuck. His voice is heavy as fuck. He makes the songs heavier. So yeah, I've heard down forever, dude. <laughs> dude. You're gonna hate me, but he sounds like Chris David Cornell. Freeman. Chris Cornell. <laughs> Who, David? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's uh what's funny about that uh that dickhead uh gave Matt Heafy vocal lessons. I don't know if you know who Matt Heafy is. Nope, he's at least the, not. He's the singer and guitar player for Trivium. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also started fucking his throat up, so he wanted to learn how to sing better. And uh, after, like, they got rid of the metalcore sound, they kind of tried to go thrash, and it was not good. But they did an album. I think their heaviest album is called uh, Shogun. Fucking great, great album. It's uh like mature. I don't I, cause like if you listen to their album Ascendancy, that's the one where they got like famous, and has fucking pull harder on the strings of your martyr and I forgot the name of the other song, but like you could tell they were Chavalillos when they wrote that one compared to Shogun. Whoo wee, that's a fucking album. But yeah, uh, after that, like, uh, he wanted to, I guess, go easier on his vocals. So he hired that motherfucker to teach him how to sing a sound, a silence. <laughs> oh, you t- you talking about Trivium. Yeah, that's what I said. 
I heard something else for said, some reason. I said Matt Heafy, the singer from and guitar Trivia. player from Trivia. Yeah. Dude, I'm tripping out. Or it's a drink. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, oh, fuck. Speaking of that, fucking, I have to take this shot of Blackened. Ooh. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll tell you what it tastes like now that it's been sitting here for fucking <laughs> the whole time. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you were going to ask him that earlier. I completely forgot. Yeah, I completely forgot, man. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Is oh, it? shit. How does it taste like? Like, if we had to compare it to oh, another whiskey. Hmm. It's a worth the price tag. That's what you want. I guess I want to ask. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I can judge that from one shot, but... Hmm. It's good. It went down smooth. It didn't really burn coming back up. <sighs> well, fuck. Uh, I guess let me talk about that for a quick second. So Metallica has a whiskey branded under their blackened title. And uh, on the bottle itself, it says a blend of straight whiskeys finished in black brandy casks. Now, it's smooth, so I can I can get the black brandy now they come labeled and uh, arranged by numbers and the one that I have is number 98 and uh, let me go ahead and uh, go a little further onto that so they're apparently forged by sound each batch of blackened has a unique playlist that is used to sonically enhance the whiskey during finishing as the well-aged whiskey rests in the finishing barrels, music is played to the barrel, causing the barrel inside to move and interact with the oh, causing the whiskey inside to move and interact with the wood. The movement of the whiskey and the amount of interaction depends on the song being played. So the variation of music creates a slight nuance from one batch to the next. Throughout this process, Dave tests the whiskey to determine the optim optimal color and flavor profile for each batch. So, number 98, the songs were selected and arranged by the one and only James Hetfield. Now, there's eight songs for each batch track list, I guess. And, uh, lame. <laughs> number number 98, It's I'll, I'll go one through eight. I'm not going to read one, two, three. But I'm just going to go from top to bottom. Number one is top, number eight, bottom, okay? So, num uh, fuck, the first one, Just a Bullet Away. Never heard that song. Here Comes Revenge. Never heard that song. <laughs> no Remorse, okay. The Unforgiven Three, okay. Harvester, Harvester of Sorrow, okay. And Justice for All, now we're getting there. Motor Breath, awesome. And then the last one, finishing off the nuance, Thorn Within. Never heard of that song. <laughs> <laughs> so half of the playlist. <laughs> like, uh, my favorite one is fucking uh, Motor Breath. Uh, fucking, hold on, let me go to their website. So if you get one with a different playlist, it it's a, like maybe shit. Maybe it tastes better, I don't know. <laughs> What if the better the playlist, the crappier it is? Oh, <laughs> oh that you, would suck, man. You know what? I I wish, or I hope, that there's a song with whiskey in the jar, or a playlist with whiskey in the jar. But hold I, on, I could see that. I don't know why becoming like a collectible collectible item. It is. It's like like hey guys, the top top ten uh, Metallica play songs were to this bottle. Yeah. So it's, it's going to taste like hell. Yeah, like they're, they're... Okay, so look, fucking... The first batch is batch 81, and it's arranged by the whole band. I have the Beholder, Cyanide, I Disappear. Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> For Whom the Bells Toll, Sad But True, One, The Outlaw Torn, Broken Beat and Scarred, The Call of Cthulhu, The Thing That Should Not Be, Dream No More, The Frayed Ends of Sanity, Fight Fire with Fire, Orion, and Disposable Heroes. That's a fucking playlist, right? 
Yeah, better than what you had. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's like the superstar <laughs> playlist, right? Because it's all of them. And each batch is uh, made or arranged by somebody else. So 82, 83. Let me go until I find one that I like. Oh, look, there is one. Number 84. It's by fucking Kirk Hammett. So the first one is 81, and that's James Hetfield. Or the first one is all of them. So whatever. That's the one that I just read. The second one is James Hetfield. The third one is Lars. Nobody wants that one. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one that you throw away. But the one right after is Kirk Hammett. Number one, Eye of the Beholder. Battery. The Four Horsemen. Whiskey in the Jar. Lords Damn. of Lords of Summer. Of Wolf and Men. Here Comes Revenge and Devil's Dance. That's a playlist. Uh, and then fucking the bass player has to come and fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Spit out the bone. Suicide and redemption. All nightmare long. The struggle within. The day that never comes. Metal militia. Best song on there. Creeping death. Oh, second best song. And dryer's eye. Or Eve, excuse me. We had to put songs that he actually. Was songs that he actually was there. Yeah. So I like what half of the album, half of the list is the the last two CDs, the last two. Yeah, the, yeah, two they're, they're trying to get people to listen to the new shit. Yeah. Uh, number eighty six. Let me find the one that I think is like the perfect one. No. Wait, wait, so you have to look for the number in the bottle? Well, yeah, each bottle has a different uh, number so, on it. So each you, each batch. Did you like that? Did you notice that garbage? That there are different numbers to each bottle? Oh man, I just picked up the the first one on the li- on the on the shelf. Damn, I'm just trying to look for that fucking That specific number. one, yeah, that's why I'm saying. Oh, this one is pretty like, good. It's like a pack of cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're <laughs> looking for the perfect... The hey, perfect... man, if you would have told me, I would have looked for it. Well, I mean, I, I, they have so many, I doubt they have all these there. I think when I went, they only had like three or four bottles. Oh, no, that, the shelf looked, looked pretty stuck. Though. Hey, man, for, for that song oh. that you made for me, you you deserved it. Oh. Two songs. <laughs> okay. Okay. Two songs. Got <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I found probably my favorite one so far. It's number ninety-two, and again, it's selected by Kirk Hammett. The first one, "For Whom the Bells Toll," "The Small yeah. Hours," "Sad but True," "The Thing That Should Not Be," "Dream No More," "Sing Dang Around My Neck." <laughs> <laughs> Crash course in brain surgery and wherever I may roam. Nice. That's a that's a sick fucking. Get out of here. You know what? I'm kind of pissed that there's no uh, Cliff Burton on any of these. Oh, Fate to Black. Number number ninety five is not that bad. Uh, I'm not gonna say who makes that one because fuck him, Lars. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, how many do they have? God damn. One hundred and four. So it goes from eighty one to one hundred and four. But, but they're, yeah. all, they're all blackened, and they all have different, different numbers. Yeah, the different numbers means, like, the soundtrack is different. So, like, you think it, they'll actually be different? The flavor? Do you, want me to, do you want me to tell you what I think, honestly? That's bullshit. Fuck yes, it's bullshit. <laughs> well, it, it's no different than the fucking barrels vibrating in the back of a truck. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're gonna make one uh, whiskey like that. This one got well, taken through well, let, Highway 35. I've, <laughs> I've always wanted to like make my own whiskey at home. Uh, it's not illegal unless you try to sell it. So fucking, uh, I want to do it, and then uh, we'll we'll just put our our uh, fucking intros on repeat, <laughs> and we'll call it the Monte Mix. The multi mix, multi yeah. style whiskey. <laughs> but yeah, fucking uh, uh, respect to you, garbage. Uh, I I didn't expect payment. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like I said, I, I'm more than willing to do it for free because it's just what I like to do. So, shout out to you. And uh, for those of you that don't know where garbage comes from, he has his own podcast. Uh, I don't know if you want to go ahead and give us the name. Cause I'll fuck it up. Mm. It's just junkyard talk, uh, but it's it's all geeky shit with magic. It's a game, but eh. 
<laughs> Jeez, well, well, what what is the exact title? Because I always fucking say it backwards. Uh, junkyard talk. And uh, you can find it uh, on Podbean. Yeah, it's on Podbean for right now. Eventually, I'm gonna go into Spotify, but I want to first get like a lot of like my idiosyncrasies fixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that I can eventually like make it sound better and whatever not, but. Oh yeah, I uh, heard I heard your last episode and I was kind of butt hurt that you only used like ten seconds of the song that I worked so hard to make. <laughs> <laughs> but, of it, I'm actually gonna use all of it for uh, probably for a stream when I start setting everything up. But yeah, yeah, that that's a good way to use it. You know, yeah. next time just play repeat throughout the whole episode. You know, <laughs> it will, in the background it'll repeat. get super <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Just the same 30 seconds of music over and over and over for like an hour. Get out of here. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, fucking, I was, uh, it kind of made me feel proud to hear something that I worked on somewhere else mm. other than me whoring out myself. Dip, 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 dip. <laughs> nah, it's, it was good. I got good feedback from the people that listened to it. So they liked it. Uh, so obviously I'm gonna keep on using it for pretty much. I mean, if I uh, it's already settled in, so I'm probably gonna be using it for the podcast until I stop it. But well, yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. right, go ahead. Sorry, cut you. No, off. I said I was about to go pick a fight with Ray with the oh. last album with uh, Metallica. Well, I, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Or was it? Or was it you, Desecrator? Desecrator is like none of the new shit. Nah, Metallica can eat my ass. Oh, oh, come- <laughs> I don't mind the, the new stuff. It's not great, but it's solid. So I, I thought Hardwired was better than uh, Death Magnetic. Oh, by oh, far. Yeah. Oh, by yes. far. It is better. Uh, uh, one of the songs that I really love from that album is, uh, what's it called? When, I'm, when a Blind Man Cries. Man, I don't know none of the songs. I it's, heard the <laughs> no, it's I've listened to it for a few, a few times, man. It's it's pretty good if you give it a listen to it. Moth into a flame is also pretty good. Uh, Atlas Rise is pretty good. So it has some like, actually. Bangers. I like Atlas Rise. Yeah. yeah. I remember that one because he says it like a thousand times. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, going back to the Trivium thing, dude. I I was I don't know why I thought a whole different album, but I agree with the Shogun thing. Great album. Uh, I like that amazing. song, dude. Shogun has such a. I like the tempo change, the key change that they yeah, have throughout the, the song. That that's when they were like, to me, that's Trivium in their prime. They 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 still make music, and uh, it's all right. I think I got to see them live. That was uh, probably one of my favorite concerts. I saw Trivium with Children of Bodom and Amona Marth. Was that in uh, Was that in uh, SA, man? Yeah, it was in in San Antonio. Was that the one that was outside in uh, the AT T Center? No, no, this one was at uh, the White Rabbit. Uh, if you if you've done or been to any metal shows in in San Antonio, then you have to know the White Rabbit. It's like this small shitty little hole in the wall place, but fucking shit, the, the shit goes down there. It goes down, man. Yeah. I mean, who the fuck goes to metal shows anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Especially now, fuck. Well, yeah. But it closed up a long time ago. Yeah, it closed down a good while back. I'm I mean, pretty... w- wasn't rock like the the most popular genre? And, and it got t- it barely got overtaken by rap this past two years because of like sound- SoundCloud and all of that stuff. All the nerd rappers. I said my rap's been taking over since for a good while. Yeah. No, I mean it, it has, but like I think it officially took it over like this past two three years. Cause I don't know, man. It's a bit longer than that to me. Yeah, uh, rap and hip hop has always been one of the major, one of the major pop pools. <laughs> you know the last uh, band I saw, White Rabbit, AFI. <laughs> AFI. You know, yes. uh, fucking growing up, I kind of. Thought AFI was like bitch music, but now that I'm uh, older and more wise, <laughs> uh, I I can appreciate it. Yeah, that's what hap- right. th- that's what what happens when you're a close-minded metalhead. That's why people gotta let go of that shit. 
They <sighs> did a, a, pretty, a pretty good show for it to be there, you know? Fucking probably one of the most rowdy shows I've ever been to. I saw Cannibal Corpse there. Damn. Yeah. I can just imagine that little fucking... That little place, that whole... Yeah. That whole place was a mosh pit. <laughs> Shit. Dude, every single band you named, I saw, but I didn't know who they were back then. I was like, back in 2010, I went to uh, go see... Who was it? It was Bullet that opened, Kill Switch, Slayer, and oh. Marlon Manson. Oh, that's sick. Except but for they bu- except had for, except for 10 Bullet. bands outside, dude. What the fuck? Just so it was like, who was it? It was Jaw for a Cowboy. It was All That Remains. It was <laughs> Mush- Mushroom Head. Mushroom it was, Head. No way. Uh, who else? I think Trivium was one of them. And then I think it was um, Cannibal Corpse, I think. That sounds about right. And <laughs> I'm trying to remember. There was two or three more bands. Uh, I always said job for a cowboy, and I'm trying to find the like the actual list back then because um, so like obviously it was outside. They had alternating stages, so like they had the Jägermeister stage and the Hot Topic stage. Oh, yeah, so I was, yeah. I was I was one was setting up, the other one would actually yeah they were playing co- already. Yeah, so it was it was pretty good, man. Like you actually went all day, and then obviously the headliner was the three the four headliners were inside, and I got to see Slayer, man. So. Yeah, I, I saw Slayer. Fuck, who the fuck was it with? Oh, I saw Slayer with Mastodon. Damn. Yeah. That was a fucking cool show. I, like, I'm kind of... I had uh, seats. Uh, and it was at the fucking AT&T Center, I think. That's the shitty small one, right? Yeah. That's not the, the one that's not the Alamo Dome. No, the Alamo Dome is a smaller one, I think. And it's at and the bigger one. But yeah, the at and Center is the one where the Spurs played, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. That That's the one where I saw Slayer. And it was with Mastodon, and I think Children of Bodom opened. Oh, no, you know who opened? Fucking, uh... uh fuck. God damn it, I can't remember now. I'm, I want to <laughs> say it was Ashes Divide, but no, it wasn't them. It was, somebody, it was somebody else, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll take it back on mine. It was actually, dude, I found it. It was, it's on the archives. It's 2009 that I saw this shit. So it was, all that remains: Trivium, Cannibal Corpse, oh, Whitechapel, Behemoth, The Black Delilah Murder, Jump for a Cowboy, and God forbid, The Black Dahlia Murder. Ah, hmm. uh, fucking, uh, yeah. You know what? We we should save this conversation for next week. Uh, just talking about shows that we've been to because mm-hmm. pretty much every show that I've ever been to I have a story for <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you have a- anything else to say Poppy before we go ahead and end it we're already at an hour and a half almost yeah no, nah, I'm good man hope they you know I just want people to leave comments yeah I, I wish pe- I wish people would I checked uh, like the stats and we're getting people listening from fucking pretty much every state in the United States now. Uh, fucking Europe is starting to get more and more. So fucking shout out to you people that are coming by. Uh, if you can do me the favor, go ahead and share the love. Spread the word on your social media. Let people know that we're here. And this shit is free. Uh, I want to thank uh, Garbage for coming through yet again. Poppy, thank you for coming in. I know, oh, special. I know we had a, a little scare with the electricity. Yeah. Oh, but he made it. <laughs> oh, I tried to take a shit from the power to come back up. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I was taking a shit and put the power back up. Like, yeah. <laughs> taking a shit in the darkness and it's all hot. <laughs> That's why I like it. It comes out smooth. Oof. Ew. <laughs> but yeah, fucking uh, thank you guys. You can find this podcast uh, wherever you found this episode. <laughs> uh, I'm your boy Desecrator. This was Hanging Heavy. 
Much love and rich and rare.